Today's feast is probably one of the more favorite feasts in, throughout the church. It, it's a feast that in the, among Eastern Christians was always more the focus of the Christmas celebration than the physical, celebra the physical celebration of the birth of Christ on the tw December 25th. And I think it's important for us to appreciate the difference in perspective of why many of the Eastern churches put the emphasis on this feast. Because what this feast was about was not just the birth of Jesus, but with the Magi coming to, to uh, offer homage to him to, to focus on the spiritual meaning of the birth of Christ. And very much the focus of this feast is who has the ability to see this deeper spiritual meaning of what we celebrate in the birth of Christ. The word epiphany meaning manifestation. Who has the eyes to see the manifestation of the mystery that we celebrate in Christmas? And I think that's very much what the feast calls us to do, to ask us what we're able to perceive in the mystery we've celebrated. And in Matthew's gospel story, it's sort of this whole question of what do we see when we look at the, the when we try to perceive the mystery of Christmas is done by way of contrast that the Magi are presented as astrologers who were people who were genuinely open to the pursuit of truth. They were willing to make a journey to follow the signs they read that said that a great and significant person had been born. And when they came to finally find him, they were willing to see in the most humble of circumstances a spiritual mystery of great significance. So they did him homage. But by contrast, Matthew presents Herod as looking at the same events through different eyes, not the eyes of faith, but the eyes of fear. So what he sees is a threat to his security. And what led the Magi to worship led Herod to murder. Two sets of eyes seeing the same series of events, but looking through different eyes, the eyes of faith versus the eyes of fear. And I think very much the scriptures of this day are about calling us to look beneath the surface of things and asking us, what do we see when we look at ourselves, when we look at the people in our lives, when we look at the events of our lives? Because what eyes are we looking through, the eyes of fear or the eyes of faith? Because what eyes we look with determines what we see, and what we see determines how we will live. And I think it's a challenging question because we're brought up in a culture that teaches us that seeing is believing. But the scriptures say that's not true. What you believe determines what you're able to see. Whether What eyes you look through determine what you see. And so the question is put to us today, when we look at ourselves, when we look at the people in our lives, when we look at the events of our lives, what do we see? When we look at ourselves, do we look through the eyes of faith and are we touched by the awesome mystery of our very existence of why we're here? Are we touched by, do we see the, the mystery of love that surrounds us, the people who were put in our lives who loved us, the way we've been maneuvered to touch other people's lives, what we've been able to bring to them? Do we, do we see ourselves through the eyes of faith or do we see ourselves through the eyes of fear that we see only the inadequacies, the failures, the rejections? Because depending on which eyes we look at, or look through, we'll either be able to see the beauty and the purpose of our lives, to live our lives in a way that consciously appreciates the importance of what we have to offer to others, or whether we will live our lives like frightened children trying to avoid the next hurt. And obviously the eyes with which we look at ourselves are going to be the same eyes through which we look at other people, the eyes of faith or the eyes of fear. And if we look through the eyes of fear as Herod did, then like Herod, we're only going to see the threats that other people pose to us. And there are differences of religion or race or class or the lifestyle or belief. The people will be threats, not expressions of the diversity of God's creative love. And that's a very challenging fact for us today because as we look at our own current social and political environment, I think there is so much that is calling people and making people look at each other through the eyes of fear, to see each other as threats. But where, there, where, where people can only see each other as threats, there can be no peace, there can be no building. 
So once again, the eyes, the, qu the question is what eyes do we look through determines what we see. And just as we look through the eyes of faith or the eyes of fear at ourselves or at others, in the same way all of us have to deal with the darkness in life, the suffering and tragedy that no life can, can avoid. And the question that the, the feast puts before us, how do we view those events through the eyes of faith that allow us to see God's presence supporting us in the darkest of moments or the eyes of fear that only see abandonment and darkness, the eyes of faith that allow us to see the people that are sent to us to support us in times that we're afraid or uncertain, the people who God gives us who allows us to believe in our ability to deal with whatever challenge has us feeling f fear. Do we see the ways that we are supported even in the darkest moments, or do we see only the abandonment? And I, to me, a very powerful example, and I know I've shared this with many of you before, but uh, years ago when I worked in hospice as a chaplain, I remember there was one meeting, the hospice workers were getting uh, together and discussing their experiences, and it was interesting that all of them expressed the same experience that all of their family and friends did not understand how they could work in hospice, where you go to work and you're constantly dealing with people dying and with the heartache and the tears. And uh, They said they all ex had difficulty explaining to their family and friends that they didn't find it depressing at all because every day they saw miracles happen. Every day they saw people find the faith to let go of life with hope and trust and, and die in peace rather than in fear. Every day they saw people come in to make reconciliations that should have been made years ago. Every day they saw things happen where whoever needed to be there to get things right, to bring this person at peace, wound up being there. That in the midst of death they saw healing occur all the time and they saw people going forth in hope. They were looking through the eyes of faith to see how even in life's darkest moments that love was at work to bring healing. Their friends who didn't understand their experience only looked through the eyes of fear. That in the, mo in the most powerful ways, what we see is, de is determined by whether we're looking through the eyes of fear or the eyes of faith. That in the end, how we live with our, our lives, how we see ourselves, how we see others, how we negotiate the circumstances of life with its inevitable tragedies is determined by what we're able to see when we look at ourselves and our world. And on this feast of wise men finding the mystery of the universe and a baby lying in a stable, we're reminded that whether or not we can cease to look at the world and ourselves through the eyes of fear and come to look through the eyes of faith that reveal the awesome mystery of love that has come to live within our hearts and embrace us in all that we must experience, but whether we can do that determines whether we too can find in this world of struggle and suffering the beauty and the mystery that can ever renew us in hope and fill us with joy. So I think today's feast leaves us with that question. When you look in the mirror, when you look at the people in your life, when you look at the situations facing you now, what do you see? Do you look through the eyes that can find hope and purpose? or are we looking through the eyes of fear that only make us panic? There's probably no more important a question for us to ask every day. What are we seeing? Through what eyes are we looking? Because the answer determines how we will be able to live. So in that spirit, let us offer our prayers. <laughs>